Liverpool will not face like usually. And then when you go further and forward into racket, finding top 64 for tomorrow, you finally meet other players you have been facing before. So I love the matchup experience that these guys are going to have there. And we are going to see probably a much slower pace here. I do know that Moenski here and there does like to go for quite an aggressive Zelda. But in the same vein, when you're playing against a character who can just do so much damage and so little, oh. yep, you're just going to be throwing out those phantoms, trying to go for those neutral Bs, just to get Ridley away from your space so you can reset up. As you were saying, and this is surprising because the moment he has been approaching here, because you got the tools to close the game. You got the tools to force Sapphire to approach and then punish him accordingly. Why would you jump in against a dragon that can just wreck your face with good up smash, random up smash like this? You need to be very wary of the situation. So <gasps> this is something that's a little bit scary about Sapphire's play style. So Sapphire is like 95% a fairly sensible player, and then every now and again we'll just throw out this ridiculous, aggressive option oh. that no one's expecting. D don't worry, this is a really thing. We do have the same ah, okay. They're all like 95% uh, like calm, but those 5% are the most destructive. The moment you have one random F smash in the middle of nowhere is the moment you're going to get surprised. Ooh, and I love that roll through. And I really want to bring attention to something that Sapphire has already worked out in the matchup. We were seeing a lot of these times where Sapphire's going for these neutral Bs, and Moenski is using his own neutral B to reflect the fire. But what Sapphire's beginning to do is only throwing out two or three of the fireballs, Aye. because Zelda's going to reflect one of them, and then the second fireball cancels that first one. So you can use that to then approach and get a punish. We saw a dash attack punish straight away, and we're seeing it time and time again. Moenski. He's getting going to caught die out from a this, little bit, he? but up oh, throw, excellent okay. DI. Interesting, because he could actually punish a side with another option that could get a kill at this percent. He decided to go for an up throw. Uh, let's see if uh, Sapphire can make him, make him regret that decision, because for now, every, any of them can actually get a kill. <laughs> I love the moment he got the chill on the stage and good parry here. Whenever you get that timing right, you can actually punish it accordingly. Perfectly well done by Sapphire here, taking the lead. If he does manage to get a few percent here and there, he could, even in a word, get another stock. Yeah, and we are going to see maybe these little hints of desperation come Ooh. out from Moenski just yeah. trying to catch that jump. But the up smash isn't going to quite connect in the sour spot on the back air there, just not quite working out. And even then, the get-up attack getting punished by that back air at 180%, but now Zelda is above Ridley, and I'm loving, I'm loving uh -huh. Sapphire's patience in this matchup. Yeah, I'm loving all of the adaptation from Owinski. He did understand that, yeah, you know what, going for the instant Guardian is going to get punished every time. I'm going to get predicted on the timing, so I'm going to pace them out to be... Oh! It was such a nice idea! It was such a nice idea! A, a plus for the effort. Oh, uh, just... Had that forward smash ready, had that parry ready. And that's something we've already seen with the Phantom as well. Sapphire's parries are really, really oh, scary. I do agree. There are a few tools that the top players start to use way more than the others. It's the full stall and the parries. Because the parries just enable you to punish so many moves that are supposed to be safe on chill. And look at that. So many parries, as we are saying, managing to take and keep that lead. Even if it's a bit tight. <gasps> He could get another punish, big punish here. He wasn't expecting the smash from Mimowinski, but again, look at the percents. He's still in the driver's seat. If he does manage to get one good connection there, he could actually get a very quick kill. But we are seeing just Sapphire electing to just hold out away from that Phantom and then roll in to just get away from whatever Mowinski is trying to cook up. And again, we've got the neutral. Hey, you know what? That's down. a very slow game when you think yes. about it, considering the percents. I was expecting way more aggressive from both players. Finally going head to head in there to find a kill, but even then keeping that calm and finding a cheeky side B here. Sapphire is going again to take the lead, but a very small one. As long as he doesn't get any damage on Zelda, it's an even game. Oh! And there we go, even game. I was going to say, going all the way down there. And that's something that I feel like when you play against Ridley, a lot of characters just don't like to go down there. And we saw that again, right? The two fireballs and managing to get a punish. As long as it's an it's never number, we're good, I think. Yes. Whoop. But certainly, this is where Zelda wants any character just on the ledge. We can see Sapphire beginning 
to close the distance between these two. And Mowinski, I think it's hard because even when you're trying to play the like change the pace from sort of slow to fast, Zelda's such a slow character anyway yeah. that if she's running at you, you've got so much time to react. Exactly, and such as there, you could see him going to charge the guard and just getting punished with a fireball. Finally again, Sapphire taking the lead with the percent and the stage control, but the getting reversed, a stage like um, a stage spike could have been fatal for him. So he needs to be wary of those specific interactions. Okay. Yeah, and just perfect spacing on that dash attack, not managing it. The up air just to get Moinski in a disadvantageous position. A very aggressive dash attack just to get out the corner. Beautiful coverage there from Moinski, knowing that if the OB didn't hit and the down air to seal the deal. Yeah. Do you see what happened there? Sapphire went in there, and I was expecting a cheeky smash. He went for the down smash. Yeah. He was going for the down smash and got punished, as we were saying, by that, uh, that aggressive dash. That. And that sealed the deal for Moinsky, because it just enabled him to go for a good advantage situation, and then a stage, uh, like, sorry, um, uh, an edge guard situation, and yes. then that spike on the recovery of Ridley. Sure, it's one of the most predicted, uh, predictive um, recovery in the game, but you don't see many characters going in with that good timing, because there's not a lot of time to just go and punish it. Yes. But Sapphire managed to do it twice in one game, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it's real good. I think the name tags need to be swapped around. There we go. So, oh, hey. sorry, never no, mind. No, it's all good. I can see why. No, Moinski, yeah, doing a real good job because you're absolutely right. You know, that up B is so difficult to contest once it's out that most people just elect to let Ridley get down there. Yeah. But the fact that Moinski is willing to go down there, not once, but twice, knowing that that is an option that, that okay, I'm just going to go for it. It's going to make Sapphire think twice about any kind of recovery option as well, because Zelda has got the tools to deal with the side B recovery, with the up B to ledge, you know, the higher recoveries you can just do. And it feels like Moinski is just taking that momentum that he managed to get and electing for a much faster pace in this game too. Yeah, exactly. This is not a, the same game at all compared to the first one we had. Now, Moinski is just going Aggressive after, like, aggressive into every interaction he cut. Finally, Sapphire is going to punish him, stay to, stay to stage control, but look at what happened before. Already 130%. He could actually die from the next interaction. I know he's big, I know he's heavy, but hey, we're talking about Zelda. She got a lot of key power. She really does, and we can already see an adaptation coming out from Moinski, and that is when Ooh. Sapphire's at center stage. Wow, what? What? Another good adaptation because we've seen Sapphire go for that get up attack so many times with yes. that Guardian and finally fishing for it and getting a punish with that good F smash. As you were saying, both players are adapting, but yes. Moinski is a one step ahead. Yeah, and with Moinski, it's the phantoms, it's the lack of phantom like going for that full charge, instead going for these quarter half charges on the phantom, meaning that when Sapphire is trying to close that space, or wait a little bit longer to get to the other side. The Phantom's there before he even starts moving, and he takes a little bit more percent, but of course, Sapphire not letting that deter him at all, and just waiting for an air dodge, and Moinski electing to go to the ledge, just getting out of dodge. Any situation, beautiful two frame with the forward tilt, and he's dead. You're gone, you're done. Well done, well done. Again, we were praising Moinski for his, uh, again, uh, adaptation, but the gimp power from both players is actually quite good. <gasps> Okay, okay. A panic option is not going to get that many, that much punish. He could get a kill from this. So yeah, you know what? 50%. I'm going to take it instead of a stock. You can just see Ooh, already. Yeah, again? the side Bs are beginning to come out as well from Sapphire. Moski just electing to avoid the entire situation completely. Oh, and trying to get something going with that forward air, but the up B just beefing its way through, and again with the up smash for Sapphire, letting go of shield a little bit too early. No, I mean, I, I'm honestly surprised because, again, the rhythm of the game was going so much in the hands of Mowinski that it got reversed in a matter of seconds. I'm surprised by the adaptiveness of Sapphire and the way he does manage to make the most out of all the situation he was in. 120% for now, I think we are going... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if there's something that's in... What's the common point between the Zelda players and the DD players? There's one common point between the two. 
DDD goes for the Golders when they are in disadvantage. Zelda's goes for either side B or down B uh, to cover their recovery. And again, this is the situation that was punished by uh, what was named Sh uh, Sh uh, Sh uh, Shinik. Shinik before. And there we got the exactly same situation punished. But Sapphire going for the dash attack to punish the charge on the Guardian was perfect. He did take the lead in quite an expected manner and did manage to make the, mo to make the most out of it. So perfectly well done by him. Uh, evening the odds in that set. And I think we're in for another game five in that set. I was going to say, the, the adjustments from both of these players have been really, really good. Again, you know, Sapphire, we saw a lot from his results screens. He plays a lot of Wi-Fi, and, you know, there was always that you know, stereotype of, you know, the Wi-Fi Zelda. And, of course, Momoski, definitely a step above that. But there are going to be certain things that you're going to look out for in that kind of matchup where, you know, there are sort of the two or three key bullet points that you have in the game plan. Yeah. And it feels like Sapphire is already making those adjustments to deal with those two or three bullet points, catching on new timings, catching on new options, and overall just doing a really good job. It's like there, right? Just making sure to stay at ledge, just fly to the other side. And again, that get up attack though, an adjustment we haven't seen so far. And it's something that Moenski is beginning to punish time and time again. And what a charge on the up smash. <laughs> just parry it on the way in. What an option. Oh, mate. There's were well, a few times in those situations where he just hold his shield for so long and wait, just wait for the option from Moenski. We've seen him go for those up smash and getting punished every time. So this time he did wait for it, uh, the up B and punish it with a good up smash on the inside. So perfectly well done again by the Ridley player taking the lead and taking the start with a good dash tag here. Only 80%, that's a tad it's, uh, uh, not enough for, uh, for Smolenski to take the, the, the kill. And no punish on the whiffed up B there. Sapphire still managing Ooh. to keep his stock until no, no. the very, very side of that up air from Zelda just about managing to get the stock. And that's a 23% punish from one move. That lightning kick, so ridiculous. I, I want to know what's in that shoe, because again, 23%, this is not... Uh, <laughs> the, <you> know, <laughs> this well, is not good, my friend. Taser in a shoe. Oh my goodness, <laughs> and there we go. A really four smash. We had to see one across this set. And we're just seeing, again, the dash back forward smashes, throwing out a couple yeah. at this point in the set. And again, it's just, uh -oh. it's a scary option that Moenski now has to keep in mind because it can kill so, so early. I love that use of forward air just to catch the aggressive option that Moenski was going for. And now suddenly Sapphire with all the stage control catching the landing, no jump on Zelda, but manages to get back to the right-hand side and back into center stage. Yeah, exactly. Now dash attack again to get punished. That down beat. Every time Sapphire gets an opportunity to get in there, he is it to the most, and I love it. I love the way Sapphire is just running around. Look at his movements. He's not going to try to force an approach. He's still trying to try to force an approach or a reaction from Mowenski and punish them every time. However, his bane is that Guardian, because I don't know why, but he's been hit by so many of them. He needs to work on his timing, I think. Yeah, and it's wild because Sapphire sometimes has really, really perfect timing. I feel like when Moenski's at the side of the stage and Moenski's in the middle, Sapphire's got that timing down. But it's in these ledge trap situations, and it's when even when you may avoid the Phantom, Zelda's got something else ready for you. And that's what makes it really, really hard, particularly like you mentioned right at the start of the set. The big hurt box that Ridley has makes it so, so difficult to get around these ledge traps. Mate, again, as you were saying, the, <laughs> the hitbox from Moenski, it's so big that sure Sapphire is going to get a hit here and there but every time uh, Moenski is going to throw a hit uh, well he's going to get hit by it anytime I mean honestly look at the number of guardians that did manage to connect this is surprising and a bit uh, stressful I think for Ridley I feel like that was a really clutch get up attack there yeah. from Sapphire Ooh. and again the lightning kick out of nowhere frame six out of shield by the way frame six out of shield option and just electing for the stock and now you know We'd seen it come out a couple of times, but it really wasn't getting the sweet spot hit which you're yeah, after. And think of that Sapphire. Uh, he's been covering those options, but just with a slight delay. The same way we had that down smash going on in the, in the, uh, the previous game here. Yes. He was going for an up air. He knew exactly that Mowinski was going to jump and go over him. The issue is, he's too big for this kind of thing. Yeah. We've seen it before. You were talking about that side of the hurt box. And yes, it happened again. In another situation where he was that smaller, I think, for example, Pikachu out of every character. He could actually get uh, go for those punches yeah. without, well, 
getting hit by them. So good read, slight delay on the, the, the punish from his side. He may have waited a bit more before punishing it. Maybe he's going to take that in note and punish it this game here. One, two, four, more, two, one, four, one ski here. Sapphire is still in there, still cooking. So uh, I'm expecting, expecting a lot from him. Yeah, we are seeing once again just Sapphire being just kept to the side of the stage, electing to hold shield, electing not to reflect those fireballs back. We have seen it's been punished time and time again, so Moenski knows that in this situation, and also being able to hide behind the Phantom, the fully charged one can just deal with all of those fireballs. And again, these dash attacks, it feels like Moenski got punished a couple of times, and I saw the head shake in the camera a couple of times when the dash attacks came out. And I feel as if Moenski <laughs> has got that in his mind, but the only thing that is in Sapphire's mind is Zelda's shoe as getting to the blast zone, but a forward smash to equalize. This game just exploded, huh? Yeah, it got to connect at one point. I mean, he's been do going for them so many times. I'm happy he finally managed to find one. But as you were saying, it just exploded in a matter of seconds. And you can see already how Monsky is just rolling again with a slight lead and how he's using all his uh, like uh, tools just to either keep Sapphire away from him or just take him very out of his face whenever he got the opportunity. We can just see again the Phantom. Yeah! Sapphire electing to go for safety, but not quite managing. And again, a rinse and repeat, tried and true. Ledge trap, managing to get to center stage, so isn't going to die from that forward smash. And the beautiful part of Zelda is that the sour spot still spikes. Again, the timing is so perfect from Mowinski going for this option again and again to cover the recovery from Sapphire. He knows exactly where and when he needs to press those buttons and when and where he needs to go for a more neutral mindset, mind game plan, sorry. So we've seen him go for those Guardians just to force Sapphire to exhaust him a bit, to force him. What the hell was that? No mash at all coming out from Moenski there as Sapphire has got him on the ropes once again. We saw this and right again. at the start and again. That was a very bad DI. I was going to say, I'm surprised that Moenski managed to live that at all. 120% What here. the hell is that DI? Yeah, and just about managing. But again, what I'm not enjoying at the moment is that we're seeing we're seeing a lot of smash attacks coming out from Sapphire. Excuse we're seeing me. some up smashes, we're seeing some down smashes, and Moenski is living for arguably a lot longer than he should be. Hey, that's some plot armor. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what's the story of Moenski here, but again, surviving those three last interactions, this is not good, this is not normal. Yeah, and we can just see, just trying to get that shield pressure going, and the up air out of disadvantage is going to take the stock 43% on Sapphire at the moment, but again, this is nothing that he can't make a comeback from. Hi, sure, he can come back from, specifically when the timing and like the momentum is going for him, because even if he did, he did manage to uh, take a few percent in there, the momentum was going for him. He did find a few interactions that were interesting, those side beats, those uh, back up there, sorry. So yeah, he's still cooking. Yeah, we can see oh, Sapphire again. managing to equalize oh. it. Another two frame on the oh. forward tail, and the forward smash to take it to game five. Oh, look at the cheeky smile. Oh, he's happy. <laughs> hey, mate, I mean, come on. He did something very cookie, uh, cheeky here, and he did pay. He did pay. Going for the two frame whip that I've smashed, we know that he has a huge blast zone. So, yes. yeah, covering the recovery from any angle that Moenski could go for. That was perfect. And again, that's kind of a karma thing. He'd been covered so many times while he was trying to recover that, <laughs> hey, you know what? He got some anger to, to deliver here. I was going to say, I felt the aggression in the forward smash. <laughs> yeah. I felt, that's I felt what the all those spikes like, gave me. Yeah, this, is what you, this is what you get. You want to be at the ledge? I'll send you to the blast zone and say, get out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And that's the scary part, right, is that no matter how much it seems that Moenski has got the momentum, all, Sapphire is never out of it. And Sapphire is so good. Again, just grabbing that one moment and that just... clutch factor, yeah, yeah. the clutch factor. That's exactly it. It's the clutch factor that Sapphire has. And Moenski can't afford to relax until game is on the screen. And we got a town and city pick coming out from Moenski. That, that's kind of, uh, you know, uh, an announcement from the Moenski. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to play anymore. I'm just going to close the game, force you to approach every time, punishing, uh, punishing you every time. However, Sapphire is like, okay, mate, I'm going to do that. Look at that. I approached once, did manage to connect, 70% uh, going. 
Uh, but that's the scary part, though, is that both of these characters do tend to kill off the side, but of course, Ridley is going to have a little bit more room to run around and is going to be able to just get those kills a little bit earlier than on Hollow Bastion. Of course, you've got to deal with this part of the stage, the FD yeah. portion. It's going to be so, so difficult for Sapphire to get anything started and is just going to have to play very patiently. But again, these dash attacks are just the highest value for Sapphire at the moment and just yeah, another F smash. Sapphire was like, you know what? It worked last time. I might do it this time, but that forward Where F are you going? Where, Where did you leave him the stage? Oh, and that's the thing. You want to go for those hard reads. You want to make a statement. But at the same time, the only statement you're making is, here is the stage. It's yours now. Yeah, take it, take it. Yeah, you know take what? This I don't need it. <laughs> this is your real estate. You can have it. Finally, the plan. Oh, good collab here by Momenski, finally. Sealing the deal here. Oh, what was that side B? A cheeky side B here. Again, just giving enough uh, room for Moesi to get back on the stage, but at what cost again? Going on the other side of the, uh, the <laughs> on the other ledge. He needs to get back on the stage. Kind of a situation, a very dire situation when you're facing a big dragon like this. And again, just these dash attacks time and time again. Feels like Momoski just isn't ready for them. And we got uh -oh. a down throw at Wait. the side. And again, what was that down air? What was Moe, like, what that down air hitting? was in the different postcode. Wait, are Why you were you even going for it? Are you playing Luigi's Mansion? So stop chasing ghosts, would you? I was going to say, you're just, it's so difficult. And that's the thing, Moeski managing to get his way back in it. But both of these players really need to, it feels like almost they need to look at the game for a second. Like, you need to stop going for these hard reads. It's game five with two stocks. You need to just keep it calm. You need to calm it down, slow it down a bit. Certainly if you're Moeski, I would argue. Yeah, and that's the Surprising considering again the first game was very slow, very chill from both players, keeping the calm up to the very end. And here we have reads up after reads after reads from Mowinski. Sure, one of them is going to uh, be enough, but the others are going to get punished accordingly by Sapphire. And there yeah. we go, finally managing to punish that forward air with the grab, setting up the Phantom though, just so that Mowinski can get back to stage. And again, another dash attack misses the sweet spot though. That could be crucial in this game. Yeah, again, look at them. The Guardians are going to be the bane of Sapphire whenever he needs to approach. And you can see that whenever Mowinski is just slightly uh, 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 behind him, oh, sorry, far from him, he's trying to force him to approach, doesn't manage to do anything with it. And you can see how finally both players are getting a bit more calm, uh, calmer here. Yeah. They're waiting for the opponent to make a mistake, and none of them want to approach. Yeah, and this is this is always a crucial part, right? Yeah. When it's that high percent two stock situation and the dash attack. I saw the grimace on Moenski's face, oh. but just managing to get back and, in it. Uh oh. Uh -oh. And this is it. He, there was no other way to finish the block. He made a taunt. He made there a was taunt. no other way to finish this block. We are game five, last stock situation here. Both of these players gonna want to advance to tomorrow into top 64. And Sapphire finally got Moenski in disadvantage. But again, the up smash, yeah. a bit greedy and takes 40% for it. And now dead even percent. Uh, yeah, that even a slight lead now for Moinski, but this, uh, this, the stage control is given on both sides. The next integration could be fatal. Why does it connect? The good max. Good here to avoid, but however, the Guardian is going... No, again. <sighs> Makes those interactions are played by an inch every time. And it's so scary when both that of these dash attack every time. Too. I know it's just working out so hard, and the down smash. I'm not sure what Sapphire was after there. Just trying to go for these options. Doesn't gonna isn't gonna die just yet. Manages to just about avoid it, and it goes a lower. Crucial tech from Moenski. Yeah, now what? Fetted here. Sour spot not going to seem to be enough. Recovery that's been temporized. Perfectly well done by Mowinski here. Going for the Guardian just to get some room to breathe a bit. 108% on Sapphire. He's a bit ahead with the percent, so he could get a kill quite quickly. Why would you go to the ledge? You know already how it's been hard for you to get back on the terrain every time. He just, he, again, he gave him room for that. Perfectly well done by Mowinski. Taking 